Hello, and welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff, and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend, Bradley, and today marks part three in the ongoing Stuff and Things guide to pipe smoking. In part one, we covered why you may want to smoke a pipe to begin with. In part two, we talked about buying your first pipe, and now in part three, we're going to discuss selecting your first tobacco. Now, the subject of tobacco is rather contentious sometimes because it's a very subjective thing. If you like something, someone else may not like it just the same way that you do. Um, differences in chemistry in your mouth, all sorts of different variables can determine whether or not you're going to enjoy a certain tobacco. Someone with whom you may seem to share completely similar tastes may love a certain tobacco, you may hate a certain tobacco. So because of that, this video is going to be necessarily a little more vague and not quite as opinionated as some of the other videos, and probably a little shorter. And I also don't want to get bogged down too much in a lot of the terminology involved with different tobacco blends, because that could be a very long video, and maybe in the future we'll touch on some of that stuff a little more in depth. But on a very basic level, there are two kinds of pipe tobacco which you may want to procure for your very first pipe smoking uh, experience, let's say. There are aromatics, and there are non-aromatics, on a very basic level. Now, aromatics are pipe tobaccos which have been cased and or topped with flavoring added. So what that means is um, molasses, sugars, vanilla flavoring, chocolate flavoring, any sort of flavoring are mixed in with the tobacco. They coat the actual tobacco. And that is supposed to impart a flavor to the tobacco. And often, with aromatic blends, burly tobacco is used because it's a, it's a tobacco that doesn't have a very distinctive flavor on its own, and so it takes on different flavors more easily. And then non-aromatic tobaccos are tobaccos which have not been flavored. They have no artificial or extra flavoring added. That's not to say that there aren't some things added. A lot of tobaccos have citric acid to prevent mold um, for storage, things like that. But on a basic level, non-aromatics are unflavored. And then within those groupings of aromatics and non-aromatics, there are a myriad, just almost unlimited different designations for different kinds of tobacco blends. One thing you'll hear a lot of is English blends. You may hear the term vapor. You may hear, you know, just Virginia, Burley, which are just specific kinds of tobaccos from different regions. Um, I just smacked my microphone. Hopefully you didn't hear that. There's a uh, loud explosion in your ears. So what I want to try to do, and I was thinking about this video quite a while. It's kind of why it took me a bit to get this video going. Um, I have very specific taste in tobacco, and it's going to be difficult for me not to sort of steer you in a certain direction because of the bias that I have. I guess it'd be best to start with saying... When I first smoked a pipe, I smoked an aromatic blend. That was the first thing I was given at the, at the pipe store, or the tobacco store, where I bought my first pipe when I was 18. And... Throughout the years, before I became a pipe hobbyist, so to say, I was smoking aromatics, you know, apple cavendish, cherry vanilla, things like that. And they were usually the house blend at the local tobacconist. I never liked it. Never liked a single one of those tobaccos that I tried. And I didn't realize what it meant to enjoy pipe tobacco. I would smoke those tobaccos, I would get a huge amount of tongue bite, that's something that we'll probably cover in another episode, but basically it just means that the this actual smoking of the tobacco, not the heat necessarily, but the actual chemical reaction that your mouth has with the tobacco leaves your tongue and the inside of your mouth feeling as though it's been skinned or scraped. It's not a pleasant sensation. I always got tongue bite. I always noticed that when I was smoking these aromatic blends that the flavor that I was experiencing when smoking did not match the scent of the tobacco at all. Um, you know, the tobacco would smell like cherry vanilla when I smoked it. Eh, not so much. And I just never enjoyed any of those tobaccos, and I thought that was just kind of what it was. I thought that smoking a pipe was a harsh experience, and that was just what you were supposed to expect. And it wasn't until I picked up my first non-aromatic, which was this, Orlet Golden Sliced, that I actually really enjoyed smoking a pipe, and that's what kind of opened the door to 
an entire world of different tobacco blends. So with me being the, the, the type of person who has never enjoyed an, an aromatic blend ever, it's very difficult for me to be unbiased when talking about pipe tobaccos. Now, one thing that a lot of people will say, and a lot of tobacconists seem to believe, that aromatics are what you should start out on because they think they're the most innocuous, the most mild, the easiest to get into. And having just mentioned all the background I've given you about my experience with aromatics, based on what other people have told me as well, that is not the case. I think, well, let's see here. I love English mixtures. And at a very basic level, an English mixture is a mixture usually of Virginia and Latakia, which is an oriental, an oriental tobacco which originally was produced in Syria. I don't want to get into all the history and background of this, but now it usually comes from Cyprus. It's a fire-cured tobacco has a very smooth, rich, smoky flavor, and on a basic level, an English mix is, or an English blend, is Virginia's with Latakia's and maybe some other condiment tobaccos, different oriental or spice tobaccos added. There are also Virginia's, just straight Virginia tobaccos, which is usually a more sweet, kind of hay-like, actually a very tobacco-y taste. If you think of what tobacco tastes like to me, that's what a Virginia tastes like. There are vapors, which are Virginias and Periques. Now me throwing out all this terminology, if you're new to pipe smoking, isn't gonna be completely helpful to you, but I wanna say right now. <laughs> based on my own experiences, based on experiences of other people I know who smoke pipes, don't start out smoking an aromatic. Because it seems to me that a lot of people experience tongue bite from aromatics and tongue, tongue bite, ha ha, tongue bite is very uncomfortable and it might turn you off to smoking in general. Now that's not to say that you will experience tongue bite if you try an aromatic, you may not. There are plenty of people who really like aromatic tobaccos. And that's not to say that eventually if you do find yourself enjoying smoking a pipe that you shouldn't go ahead and try some aromatics. My chemistry, my mouth chemistry just might be such that I cannot. I've tried quite a few different aromatics and have yet to find one which I really enjoy. I've heard that a lot of the J.M. Boswell's aromatics are very good. That's something you can look up online. Um, the Lane Aromatics, it's another tobacco blender. I haven't had any luck with it. But if I had to give anyone advice on picking their first tobacco, I would pick something like Orlick Golden Sliced or Dunhill's Elizabethan Mixture. Now, neither of these contain Latakia. And supposedly to a lot of people, Latakia which is that smoke-cured tobacco I was mentioning before, is very strong and very hard to get used to. It's, it's an acquired taste. It wasn't that way for me. The first time I had Latakia in a blend, I loved it. But apparently, a lot of people have trouble with it. So to me, something that would be very innocuous, but very flavorful, very unlikely to provide tongue bite, but something that would give you a pleasurable smoke, I think, as your first experience smoking a pipe, would be something like Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture. It's a mild tobacco, still full of flavor, has a little spice from Perique, which is another sort of condiment tobacco. It's grown in St. James Parish in Louisiana. But I don't think that all things being equal, it will, well, actually I do know a couple people who have think that this is a little harsh. It is maybe a little high in nicotine content, but either one of these, Orlick Golden Sliced, or Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture, I think would be a good starting point for you to just sort of get your head around what tobacco pipe or pipe tobacco tastes like. Um, there are other vapor mixtures out there, and if you have a local tobacconist, they will have, you know, Virginia Perique mixtures, they'll have just straight Virginia mixtures. Go ahead and go in there and smell some of these things, because one thing that, that I will say as well is just smelling like an English mixture that has a lot of Latakia, if you've never smoked a pipe before, you might be just, whoa, freaked out by the smell. And maybe that'll turn you off to it and it's not gonna be something that you're gonna be able to try right off the bat. But if you put your nose into a jar of just nice, sweet Virginia, I can't imagine that that would turn you off. The smell is, is pretty nice.
So I know I told you I wasn't going to give you any specific advice, and I know this is kind of a weird rambling video, but by the very nature of pipe tobacco and people's tastes and acquired tastes and mouth chemistry and all sorts of different strange subjective things, if I had to give advice, which I said I wouldn't do, but I'm going to do it now, start out with a nice Virginia mixture, maybe a vapor, which is a Virginia Perique mixture. Ask your local tobacconist what they have in terms of house blends, or if you see Orlick Golden Sliced or Dunhill's Elizabethan mixture, try to check those out. Stay away, people are going to yell at me, but stay away from an aromatic as your very first pipe tobacco. Just anecdotally, from what a lot of people have told me and from what I've experienced myself, they can be tongue bitey and that could turn you off to pipes forever. Eventually you could you could delve into that and maybe you'll enjoy some of those tobaccos. But try a Virginia first. Try a Virginia Perique. Try something mild and innocuous like that that doesn't have any flavoring added. Just nice, pure, unadulterated tobacco. If you have more questions about, you know, some of the blends that might be available for the first time when you're thinking of trying your pipe for the first time, uh, write them in the comments, message me privately, if you will, on my channel page. And I'm sure in the future I will make more videos just about specific blends, specific tobaccos. I'll have tobacco reviews, but sort of approaching it from the perspective of a first-time pipe smoker, I wish I had tried something like Orlick Golden Sliced or Elizabethan Mixture sooner, because I think I would have enjoyed smoking a pipe much sooner. And it would have saved me years and years of really unpleasant experiences. Now, I know that not everyone is going to have the same chemistry, mouth chemistry as me, the same likes and dislikes as me, but I really think you'll be safe if you try a nice Virginia or a nice Vapor Virginia Perique mixture first. So that's all I can say about the subject at the moment. The next video we're going to do in the Stuff and Things Guide to Pipe Smoking is going to be about the other tools and accessories you will need to successfully smoke your pipe. And after that, we're going to get into loading your pipe, packing your pipe, get into lighting your pipe, and actually smoking your pipe. I know it seems like a long way away, but eventually we will get to actually lighting and smoking a pipe. So stick with us, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you very much for watching. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. Good day.